Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter two, number 84. And here we were given a box plot and we were asked a whole bunch of questions. So I'm gonna go through these one at a time. It said, which quarter has the smallest spread? And what is that spread? So when it says which quarter, you have to remember that these are all broken up. Box plots break your data up into 25% chunks. So 25% of your data was here, 25% here, 25% here, and 25% here. And sometimes it messes with us because these aren't the same length, right? And you think, well, they should be equal, but they're, they're not necessarily. Data always isn't always distributed uniformly. It clumps, it skews left and right. So those spreads are different numbers. So if we just take a look at the spread from the first quarter, it's zero to two, right? The spread from the second quarter is two to 10. Third quarter was 10 to 12, and then we had 12 to 13. And this was asking us for the smallest spread, right? So if I wanted the smallest spread, I mean, I could also think of it, you see me calculating it here as the smallest range. And the smallest number we see in there is one. So if I'm talking about the smallest spread, it goes from 12 to 13. I, I actually think they should have phrased this question was which quarter had the smallest range, but I'll just go with your book. And then on the flip of that, it asked, well, which one had the largest spread? And you can also see here that eight, right? Eight is the largest number. So the second quarter was the one that had the largest spread of two to 10, right? And again, another way to just kind of look at it visually is this quarter that took up the longest space on my x-axis and that one took up the shortest amount of space. So longest quarter, sm um, smallest quarter. Okay, the next question said, hey, can you find the IQR? And the IQR is always Q3 minus Q1. So if I'm taking a look at that, that will be 12 minus two, and that would be a, a span of 10 units, right? We don't know the units on this. They didn't give us any context, but it's saying that this, this middle 50% of my data and I say middle 50% because we've got 25 here and 25 here, it is spread out from 2 to 12, and that's a range of 10, right? And that is quite literally the interquartile range. All right, and then part D said, uh, let me erase some of my markings here so we can just kind of reset. Let me get all of that out. Okay, so um, part D asked, are there more data in the 5 to 10 interval or in the 10 to 13 interval. So let me let me mark these here. I'll go 10 to 13. So they already are distinguished. So we've got 10 to 13. And then let's remark that. I'll go ahead and say five is maybe like here. There's my guess for five-ish. And I only have to ish it at this point. So we're gonna go five to 10. All right, so let's see if we can kind of figure out how much data is in each of these intervals. And I'm gonna go back to the pink one and I'm gonna do 10 to 13 first. So we know from 10 to 13, Right, we have 25% of our data here and then 25% of our data here. So if I think about this overall 10 to 13, right? How much data is in here? It's 50%. So half of my data, whatever the context, half of it is from 10 on up. On the flip of it, half of it is from 10 on down, but half of it is from 10 on up or from 10 to 13. All right, now let's look at this span and let me change my pen color from five to 10. All right, five to 10, we know that if we looked from two to 10, that was only 25% of my data, right? I know it's the largest um, part of the box plot, right? The largest quarter, but it's still, it's 25% of my data. So if I'm going from five to 10, I know that this is less than 25% because if this whole thing is 25% and I only wanna go from five to 10, that's less than 25%. So we're looking at 50% versus less than 25%. And it says, which interval has more data? Well, this interval has more data. All right. And then it says, which interval has the fewest number of data in it? And how do you know this? Now, let me let me clear out what I have. I'm going to erase a bunch of stuff just because we've got all sorts of colors hanging out here. And I've made all sorts of markings. So let me just erase what I've got up here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think that's a little cleaner. Okay, so now let's let's go take a look. So part E asked you to go between, they wanted zero to two, right? They wanted two to four. I'll just put a four here, right? And then they wanted 10 to 12 and 12 to 13. And it said which interval had, and this time for part E, and I'll scroll down to my actual answer in a second, but for part E, they said which interval had the fewest uh, data in it. Well, keep in mind this first interval, right? We know that it had 25%. I'll come back to two to four. 10 to 12 had 25%. 
and 12 to 13 had 25%. Now, two to four, this interval right up in here, right? We know it has less than 25% because it's this entire span that has the 25%. So this is the one that's less than 25%, and that means that has the fewest data in it. And that's what you see me writing for Part D. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.